Hey guys, Cajun Cardboard coming at you. Very excited. This is episode number five of a five-part series. If you missed the four episodes before this, go check them out. But we are looking at the top 50 cards slash assets in my collection. Um, like I said in the original episode, you know, YouTube stuff is supposed to be either entertaining or educational. Uh, hopefully this is both. Um, it's given me a good perspective to look at closely at the top 50, the, the top heavy portion of my collection to see how diversified I am, what uh, it consists of, what uh, each player comprises as far as the percentage of my portfolio. Um, it's it helped me be a little more introspective and kind of take a you know look back at what I have and where I need to go and what my goals are for 2022 in the hobby. Um, that's something I encourage all of y'all to do as well. Uh, I think it's always great to take a step back or maybe find a fellow collector and ask them, you know, um, what do you think about what I have? What would you do? What are your thoughts? Do you see anything that sticks out? Do I have any holes in my collection? Should I go down a new path? Um, you know, should I keep exploring the path I'm on? There's a million different directions we can go in this hobby and that's part of the reason I love it is, is I can just click this record button and talk about, literally I could talk about 365 different things, 365 days in a row. Um, and, and that's just part of the beauty of the hobby and part of why I love it so much. Uh, but let's get cranking. So, uh, like I said, today we're looking, uh, this is episode number five. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the first four. The top 10 are going to be the best of the best, uh, at least that I have in my uh, collection. Um, it, it says cards number 10 through one, but as you'll see, three of these top 10 are assets. Uh, so you're not going to get any high def pictures in um, in PWCC of those. But let's, let's uh, wait no longer and get going in card number 10. So card number 10 is going to be a tricky one with an asterisk. It is the, uh, it is the EX uh, 2001 um, Jambalaya Michael Jordan. This, however, is a Pop 2 ever graded uh, uncut, missing uh, the die cut. So it's an interesting card. If you take a look at the card, it is beautiful. Uh, it's everything about this card is beautiful, uh, just like the original Jambalaya. Um, I get... A little bit of uh, I don't want to say heat or pushback um, but uh, true old-school collectors don't give this card much credit even though it's a very low pop card and even though it is real I don't want uh, to give off the impression I'm showing you a custom or a fake card it is a real card there's a lot of theories as to where it came from um, a lot of people think it's after the bankruptcy the card was produced and it's part of a sheet and it's sheet cut um, you know, some people try to cut this card out and pass it off as an original uh, die cut jambalaya, which I 100% do not uh, condone or encourage. Um, I bought it uh, before the explosion, certainly before the explosion of the jambalaya card for a pretty good price. I'm really happy to have the card. Would I rather have the, um, you know, the kind of foundational uh, top five Jordan insert in the world, the die cut jambalaya, absolutely, and and I will one day. Um, but I will probably keep this one as well because I think it's uh, an interesting story to put it next to the die cut version, um, and it is extremely rare. Um, like I said, I think I think only two of these have ever been graded by BGS. Um, some people don't think BGS should even have put this in a slab. Um, each person's got their own opinion. Comment below what you think about it. Um, I've heard good and I've heard bad, so you're not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, I really would love to just encourage more comments and more discussion on the matter. But, but card number 10 in my collection, believe it or not, is this non-die cut um, Jordan Jambalaya uh, that's, that's sitting in my collection. So let's keep moving on to card number nine. Uh, this one will uh, be familiar to anybody who's a true Jordan collector. It is the um, BGS 9.5 Min Gym uh, Noise Boys. Um, timeless is Skybox Thunder from 1998 featuring Jordan in his black uniform. Um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a timeless piece. You know, it's with big men on court, with platinum portraits, the Noise Boys, the Jambalaya. I mean, these are all... These are all the Jordan inserts that um, you know that we're all chasing. I'm blessed enough to have it in a 9.5 condition. Like I said, I got it relatively early on before it got away from me. Um, it's just an awesome card. 
Um, you know, the, the back of it reads, MJ, it's fitting. Uh, you are in Space Jam because your game is truly from another planet. Even when you come into our stadium and try to beat our team, we can't help but make crazy noise. That's corny to me, but people love 90s stuff. Um, how could we not win the games on the line and you simply pull off the double team, elevate, fadeaway, release, rotation, swish? That is true. Uh, at this stage of his career, he was literally just putting people in a blender in the mid post and the deep post. And he just had an untouchable shot, man. It's one of the most unstoppable shots uh, in the history of the game that he developed that he did not have early in his career. And so, um, Giannis, if you're if you're watching this video, my, my man, Giannis, my favorite modern player, go watch Jordan. Go watch what he turned into. LeBron, go, uh, go watch what Jordan turned into, how he could still dominate the game and win three rings when he wasn't blowing by people and dunking on their face. Uh, when his athleticism waned, his skill... Um, really rose to the top and his dedication and his game changed and he uh, achieved greatness and he really became the greatest, um, in my opinion, sports athlete of all time. Um, anyway, that was a diatribe about how great Jordan is. Card number eight we uh, is actually not Jordan. Um, so interestingly enough, there's two non-Jordans, well, really five non-Jordan assets in my top 10, uh, which may come as a bit of a surprise. But uh, card number eight, uh, we're looking at the 1997, I know you all get probably sick of seeing these, the 1997 Metal Universe Precious Metal Gems, Shaquille O'Neal, where he's yamming on Sabonis. How do those taste? Arvidas, I don't know what the blank, this airplane propeller <laughs> is doing on this card. I'm sorry, I'm laughing at my own just confusion. There's an airplane propeller on the screen. I'm not sure what that really has to do with Metal Universe. Um... But there's a propeller, and uh, and Sabonis is getting yoked on. Um, I wish we'd have seen young Sabonis, but we didn't. Uh, Sabonis is really just lucky to be alive after playing against Shaq, to be quite honest with you, because he was no match for Shaq at that age. Uh, Sabonis had a lot of yokage to him, for those of you who are too young to have seen him play. But this card uh, is the 97 Metal Universe PMG Shaq, um, Precious Metal Gems 5. I got it before these cards recently. Um, really started to take off, thank God. Uh, my PC Shaq. This is the, uh, the, the premier piece in my Shaquille O'Neal collection. Um, it's not a rookie card, but it is the best Shaquille O'Neal card that I own, and I'm really happy to have it, as I really love, obviously, 97 PMG Reds, and I really love Shaq. Uh, so moving on, card, uh, card number seven is not a card at all, and I don't even have a picture of it. Um, card number seven, or asset number seven, uh, is those of you who know me know I collect um, 86 Fleer. Um, so 86 Fleer PSA 8 set is uh, number seven on my assets ranked by total value. Um, all of my Fleer sets come complete with the 142 card base set plus the 11 stickers. So every time you hear me say Fleer set, it's 143 out of 143. If it's not 143, in my opinion, it's not a full set because it doesn't include the stickers. So um, I went on a mad chase and just fell in love after finding the 86 Fleer Facebook page. Uh, really fell in love with collecting the 86 Fleer set. So um, I put together three uh, PSA 8 uh, 1986 Fleer sets. Um, and so... That's that's number seven. Uh, I don't know what else to say. One of them, uh, they were actually all probably um, more investment pieces. It was really more about the thrill of the chase and the joy of completing a spreadsheet and then looking at how much it cost and trying to get cards under comps back when they were actually reasonably affordable. You would literally die if you saw my detailed to the penny spreadsheets of how much money I paid um, for those 86 Fleer PSA 8s. Uh, when I was doing it, that, that ship has sailed. That it is not. Uh, it is not as cheap today as it was then. It's probably 10x what it was. Um, I mean, I was getting commons for seven and eight dollars. PSA eight slabbed. Um, we all know that doesn't exist today. Uh, it's more than the you know the grading fees more than that. But um, anyway, that was asset number seven is three 1986 Fleer complete sets 143 out of 143. Uh, card number six is uh, iconic. It is, um, and I'm going to do a video on, I think, what I think are the top 10 vintage cards of all time, attainable vintage cards of all time uh, in basketball. And I, I'm not going to spoil it, but this will certainly be one of the top cards. Um, this is my copy of the 1980 Topps uh, scoring leaders, the, the timeless, you know, bird and magic rookie with um, no slouch Dr. J, another top 20 player of all time, right in the middle. Um, 
you know, it's a rare card. I mean, what can I say? When we were kids, we were told, you know, you you get you pull this card out of a pack. I mean, I remember getting this card in a pack uh, from um, we had now they call them Seven Elevens or gas stations, but you know, for those of you who are in your twenties or teens, um, you know, every corner store didn't have gas, but they still had corner stores. We called them convenience stores, and the one near my house in Louisville, Kentucky, was called the Magic Market. Um, and so after t-ball games or basketball games, my dad would stop in there and I'd get a pack of 1980 Topps basketball cards. And that's how I learned the league. That's how I learned all the players. My dad would tell me about all the players. And these cards were epic because it had three players he could tell me about on each card uh, that I found. But of course, I mean, when a card is perforated, what is it telling you to do? If you're a you know six-year-old kid, I was six years old, it's telling you to tear the damn things. And so I turned one card into three cards, and I turned 100 of these cards into 300 of these cards, and I kept them in a little tin box. I'll never forget. I, I tore them all up, and they're all thrown in this little tin box. I don't know where they are today, um, but I was lucky enough to acquire this before the big surge in 2019, 2020. Um, from a really good collector and a really solid, um, a solid source on uh, Facebook. Uh, I won't, you know, throw his name out there, but uh, but anyway, this is the pride of my vintage collection. I've got really three vintage cards of note. I've got a good Wilt uh, mid grade Wilt uh, sixty one Fleer. I've got a really nice um, mid grade uh, Lou Alcindor Kareem Abdul Jabbar sixty nine tops, and then I've got this um, this this nine. Um, I do have an eight as well, and I do have, I think, 12 or 15 PSA sevens, which I bought purely as investment pieces, which have not turned out to be great investments as of yet um, because they receded so much, but happy to hold those forever, man. I mean, I don't know how you don't put this card in your collection if you're a basketball card collector in some grade. You may not get a nine, and it's unlikely any of us, and myself included, is ever going to have a 10 because I think that's around 800 grand now, but... Um, you got to have this card somewhere in your collection if you're a basketball card collector. I, I, even if you're an ultra modern guy and you love the shiny stuff, I don't know how you don't put Magic and Bird on here. They saved the league from cocaine. They saved it from honestly pretty shitty players in the 70s that just didn't resonate with fans and a style of basketball that was kind of brutal and violent. And uh, they made it beautiful. And a uh, black dude, a white dude, one you know from a rural town, one from you know Magic from you know <clears throat> East Lansing. Um, just everything about it, it was like thunder and lightning, black and white. I mean, it was yin and yang. Everything about it was just beautiful and perfect. And they truly, perfectly um, ushered in the Jordan era. Uh, it was a, an unbelievable, you know, kind of transition period from a dwindling league that was honestly in a little bit of trouble uh, to what it's become today, which is must-see TV. It's almost like a soap opera where everybody knows everything about everybody. And uh, people player collect now. I mean, we were probably getting, you know, this card because we either liked the Celtics or liked the Lakers. Uh, they changed that. Everybody became one or the other. They became a Magic fan or a Bird fan. Um, and I think that kind of ushered in player collecting, which obviously transitioned into Jordan because there's Jordan collectors. There's Yeah, I'm sure there's Bulls collectors out there, but Jordan collectors dwarf Bulls collectors. Uh, let's just put it that way. But anyway, uh, this 1980 Tops uh, is card number three in my collection. Um, I'm sorry, that's card number... That's card number five in my collection, believe it or not. Okay, so that's five. So we're moving on to card number four, which is not a card at all. Uh, spoiler, it is the 2018 National Treasures box um, sealed, uh, not box, but case. So four boxes, one pack per box, 10 cards per pack, just like the other 2016 case I have. Um, my friend Bruce Fuselay, I hope you're watching this. He talked me into buying this at a time that was extremely inconvenient. I just bought a big card and he called me and he said, I've got a case. And he's like, you need to buy this. And this was before, obviously before the hobby went bananas. And uh, it was $4,100. And uh, I PayPal'd him. I was at my kid's baseball practice. Uh, I had a sick feeling in my stomach. I PayPal'd him the money. Um, I kept it in my house, in my safe at my house, which now has no cards in it. It's all my valuable cards are at uh, PWCC in the vault, as you can see. Um, I kept it in my house for a year or two and then um, shipped it away. So I resisted the urge to open this and look for that Doncic or the Logo Man or the Trey or whatever the hell else goodies might be in here. So I, I did it. I'm proud of myself. I got this sealed case off, still sealed, and it's still sealed this day. 
So that sits there, and clearly this is just an investment piece. Uh, it's just a cardboard box, so it's not great to look at. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully somebody out there will value this and buy it from me for a lot more than I paid for it one day. I don't know what it's worth today. Y'all can go do the Googling. I don't care. We're not there yet. Um, you know, as Fanatics comes in, you know, I think the case is only going to go up in value. That's just me. It's a pretty historic rookie class, and that's that's with just Trey and Luca. You know, it looks like some of the other guys may or may not pan out. Who knows? But uh, but it's a great rookie class, and and it's a it's going to end up being a memorable year for the hobby because it'll be the year that the hobby took that first gigantic leap uh, from where it was to where it is today. But anyway, that is um that is number uh, four. On the list, let's move on to number three. Again, no pictures here, so I'm not going to talk very long. I have two PSA 9 complete sets, 1986 Fleer, um, 143 out of 143. I'm not going to talk much more about it. Same story about the PSA 8s. I put them together when it was uh, significantly cheaper and easier to do. You know, and the Jordan, uh, what is the Jordan now? Like 25 grand. I think when I put it together, the Jordan then was like maybe seven thousand dollars or something i don't i don't even remember exactly i've definitely got the spreadsheets to the penny to prove it because i'm nerdy and ocd like that um but uh but that's that's item number three on my top 50 is two psa 9 complete 86 fleer sets uh so moving on to my top two and this is where i get a little bit top heavy um None of the cards that I've showed you in this top 50 are, you know, life-changing or, you know, uh, there's no Rolls Royces so far. But these top two, I'm pretty proud of. Um, and I had to do a lot of, people call it coloring up now or, or you know, building up or consolidating. You can call it whatever you want. But I had to do some work to get these two cards. Um, card number two is this uh, Michael Jordan. Um, oh, I think I skipped a card. Oh, I did skip a card. Hang on. Let me go back. I'm not going to rerun this video because I've talked forever, but I am going to take you back here. This is uh, card number five. I skipped over this. It's a BGS 9.5 Jordan that I bought purely for investment purposes. As you know, I collect the 86 Fleer sets in PSA 10. This is a minimum gem uh, BGS 9.5. Uh, I found an opportunity on Facebook from a very vetted, trusted seller who was selling at a very aggressive price. Uh, wired him the money and had it in my vault two days later. Um, I think it looks phenomenal from a centering standpoint. I mean, like I said, you can always look really hard and probably try to find centering issues. I can't on this one. I just, man, I don't know. I just love it. Uh, I think it looks really good for a 9.5 despite being a min gem. Uh, that's card number five. Sorry, I skipped over that. So back to card number two. It's the, uh, not surprisingly, uh, I got a video here. Um, I could turn on the audio, but again, I don't want to screw anything up, so I'll let the video run. But uh, you guys know how I feel about uh, about 1997 uh, Metal Universe set, and especially the PMG Reds. Um, this one was a big one. Uh, got it from the PWCC Premier Auction. I remember where I was uh, watching that. Uh, I did not have to go into extended bidding. My bid uh, held up. It didn't have to go any higher. I think I got it at a great price. Um, the, the hobby actually took a step back about when I got it in the um, fall. Uh, even on high-end cards, the hobby took a little bit of a step back on prices, even Jordans, in the uh, fall of 2021, this past year. And so um, it might have been more towards the spring, actually. But I picked this BGS 8 uh, copy up right after, um, I think, a BGS 8.5 had sold maybe the month before. And so I was hoping there would be kind of a void out there where you know whoever was willing to pay big dollars picked up their 8.5 and so i kind of picked this up i don't want to say on the cheap because it wasn't cheap um but i made a life decision i mean it was a big decision to pick this card up i just it just strikes me as a card that's never going to go down um i'll hold it as long as i need to hold it it's not like i'm trying to flip this thing for money um it's just a beautiful iconic card in, in my opinion it's probably one of the five best jordan cards in the world not necessarily this great i know there's higher grades but um in some people like the psa you know slab but um maybe it'll be in a psa slab one day i don't know but um anyway this is card number two it means a lot to me um i've never held it in my hands a lot of people think that's uh disturbing and funny um but the peace of mind that i have not having this card in my house or in my possession uh or you know within reach of anybody who I don't want to have it, to put it mildly, and it's safe and sound in the PWCC and insured and, and sitting there and I can look at it anytime. I could even go watch the video if I'm 
super obsessive and nerdy. Um, I am curious to what he's talking about. He's probably talking about that top left white corner that got it in eight. But uh, anyway, that's card number two, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. Card number one is no surprise, but what is a surprise is that, um, and not everybody knows this yet, even my friends, but um, card number one is this uh, 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan PSA 10 with the top 30% uh, A sticker from PWCC. This uh, would, about three weeks ago, have been part of my 1986 Fleer uh, PSA 10 set, which I used to own. Right now, there is a deal in place. I'm not going to go into details about who's buying it or how much or any of that stuff, but um, uh, I did negotiate uh, the sale of 142 out of the 143 cards um, from my 86 Fleer PSA 10 set. Uh, all the cards are still sitting in my vault because the deal is being approved right now and it's not fully consummated. Um, but it is done as done can be because papers have been signed. Um, so I sold 142 cards from the set, which if you're a set collector, you know, includes the Kareem PSA 10 sticker, the Johnny Moore 10, the Jeff Malone 10, the Alvin Adams 10, the Checklist 10, you know, the, the Jordan sticker 10, and then you know, well, all 11 stickers in 10, you know that's a tough a tough get. Um, I put that set together before the explosion. It was probably the most fun I've ever had in basketball card collecting. And this was obviously the centerpiece of it. Um, the reason I got the deal done is because I got a fair price on those other 142 cards, and I took the profits on those cards, which even if you're a collector, you've got to do that sometimes to keep moving your collection forward and to keep having fun and to buy the types of cards that I like to collect now. Um, so I cashed out on those 142 cards. And the reason I'm not vomiting all over my keyboard and all over this screen right now is because I got to keep the centerpiece of my collection. So um, I broke the set up. I kept one card. I sold 142 others. And uh, this is the one that I get to keep which I'm super proud of. I think it's one of the best tins in the world. I'm not biased or anything, right? But um, the centering looks great. Everything about it looks great. Um, you know, it's just a, in my opinion, it's a, it's a special card. So, um, and it's got the PWCCA sticker, which as we've seen in the past, adds a little bit of a premium, which I'm super happy with. And it's one of the great perks of putting your cards in the PWCC vault is once they slab that sticker on there, you know, they can not give you a sticker or they can give you a sticker. So it's either a tie or it's a win if you get a sticker. And so uh, I was lucky enough to get the sticker on this particular card. And um, anyway, that's card number one, guys. Um, I don't have to tell you the pop on that. It's 320. I don't have to tell you the value. It's been down, up, down, up, down, up. Needless to say, it's way up from what I bought it at or I wouldn't own it. So um, anyway, that's it, guys. That's card number one in my collection. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed these five episodes. Um, like I said, I, I did this to be entertaining thought provoking and just to, um, I learned this from, you know, from another collector. It's a good idea to just kind of take stock and take inventory of what you have and what really matters to you. Because if you're, if you're looking at, you know, if I look at card 47 and card 47 doesn't do anything for me anymore. Um, but you know, the collector side of you needs to move card number 47, <laughs> you know, you need to move 47 and 46 and try to go get a new card number 24. Um, that, that's how you kind of grow in the hobby. That's how you learn in the hobby. Um, and as much as I hate selling basketball cards, I love all of these cards and I'm a hoarder and you know that, and you can see this, um, that feeling of letting go of that card that sucks so bad is replaced by the joy of getting a bigger, badder, better card that means more. Um, so it's, uh, it's something I struggle with consolidating, but I'm trying to get better at it. And that's kind of one of my focuses of 2022. I think I did a video uh, of my 2022 resolutions, New Year's resolutions. And one of them was to consolidate into bigger and better cards that mean more to me um, and mean more to everybody. So that's kind of it. Just always keep moving forward. Um, and anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. This was episode number five. So this is the end of it. Uh, we won't talk about my particular top 50 again until 2023. It'll be interesting to see how many of these are left in there. Um, my guess is 40 will be left and, uh, I'll have 10 new cards in my top 50, God willing. Um, if everything goes right and the hobby remains as, as fun and enjoyable, uh, then as it is today. So that's it guys. Thanks for listening. Happy collecting and peace.